For the second time in two months, the IMF has cut its forecast for U.S. economic growth. And the latest update to the IMF's World Economic Outlook warns that further setbacks to a recovery could threaten the global economy. Joining us now from the Sao Paulo Stock Exchange is the chief economist of the IMF, Olivier Blanchard. Uh, welcome back to In Business, sir. Uh, this uh, reduction in outlook for U.S. growth down to 2.5%. You've said there's not a risk of a double dip in the U.S. Is there risk of a Japan-like low growth scenario for some time to come? No, I think indeed there is no risk of a double dip. Uh, there is also no risk uh, of a Japanese uh, zero growth scenario, a very low growth scenario. Uh, it continues to be the case that the recovery is weak. Uh, that it's not going to be enough to decrease unemployment very fast. Uh, what we saw was a bit more weakness that we had forecast, but in general, and we, we don't think it's, 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 it's going to last very long, but still, uh, the uh, rate of recovery is just too low. Those uh, items that you, you've said are transitory, the commodity price increase, the Japan um, earthquake and, and the disruptions it caused, those are there. But fundamentally, aren't we still looking at a scenario where you have cheap money, accommodated monetary policy, but it's not being lent, and you have consumers who remain unconfident, therefore not necessarily able to truly spend? What's the trigger that gets that growth beyond that 2.5%? Uh, I think there is no trigger which is going to achieve a miracle large increase in the growth rate. I mean, the, the two breaks are, are there and are going to slowly uh, be lifted. The first one is fiscal consolidation. Uh, that's needed, but it's truly not helping demand. It's not helping growth in the short run. Uh, the other is uh, financial consolidation, the fact that bank lending is still very tight, that banks keep uh, liquidity rather than lend it. That's going to change over time, but it's not going to happen overnight. So I think we're in for a, a slow recovery for quite a while. Last time we spoke, um, back at the spring meetings, you said you were confident that the U.S. debt ceiling would be raised. Uh, we're now well into June. What is the cost of pushing off that decision until July, until August? I think the cost is, I continue to think that the solution will be found because the alternative is, uh, is really uh, inconceivable. So something will be found. What will be found might well be a compromise, not a good long run solution. Uh, so what's going to happen is that as we get closer and closer to whatever limit it there is, uh, markets are going to give some probability to the fact that something goes wrong, there's going to be more uncertainty. Uh, in financial markets. We're probably going to see CDS spreads on U.S. bonds uh, go up a bit. Uh, that's part of the drama. I, I wish we could avoid it. I think we'll probably have to go to the wire. Uh, something will be done. Uh, whether it's uh, what we dream of or not uh, remains to be seen. Uh, I, I want to ask you quickly uh, about what's underway uh, in Europe. Um, when you look at the protests and you look at the fact that we had to see uh, a political uh, change-up of some sort, reshuffling of the cabinet in Greece because of the pressures on that government, with the people not wanting to take austerity, I believe we, uh, you're back with us. Um, do you ever wonder if the Greek people have been pushed too far or how far they can be pushed uh, to avoid default? I think that uh, we, we have to be deeply conscious of uh, pain and the sacrifices that the Greek people have to do, uh, whether or not there is a program, whether or not uh, they go one way or the other. They have an enormous adjustment in terms of competitiveness, they have a very large public deficit, they have a very large current account deficit. They have these, these pain and suffering ahead. What we're trying to do is help them to get out of the hole as fast as well as they can. We're trying to put in place social policies which protect the people who suffer the most. But there is no question, there is enormous pain. In that environment, it's not surprising that uh, there would be political unrest. It is the job of the Greek government to explain that there is really no alternative. At the same time, uh, you know, Greece needs help. It needs uh, financing. It needs to be able to, uh, to, to take the measures it takes without suffering uh, too much. And there, that's the other part which is in play, which is we have to make sure that the financing is there.
All right. Uh, we have to leave it there. Olivier Blanchard, Chief Economist of the IMF, thank you very much for joining us Good. live from Brazil today.